Hi, welcome back. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. some housekeeping businesses. If I sound stuffed up, I am. The spring allergies are in full force and I am feeling all of them. Along with that, I have seasonal affective disorder or SAD and mine is springtime related as the as our bodies go from not getting any sun to getting all the sun. My body just doesn't handle that transition very well and I'm a lot more low energy during this time period. And so you might not see as many videos po being posted or with regularity. I'm really working on being having a more regular schedule, but this time of year I just sometimes don't have the energy to do anything, even if it's something I want to do. Moving on to our book wrap-up. I teased you all with Prosper's Demon, and I did finish this last weekend. This is by KJ Parker, and it's about a... I don't think we ever find out the main character's name, but he can sense demons, and so is a demon hunter. And his job is part of the priesthood, but it's not the same as all the other priests in the Catholic Church. And he just goes from town to town finding demons and kicking them out of people's bodies. And he doesn't actually care for the people that the demon is in. And there are some interesting twists here, whereas demons can't die. So even if they get kicked out of a body, they'll just go find a new one. There's a specific demon that he is hunting, someone who he keeps going head to head with, and he thinks he knows where this demon went. And when he gets there, he finds a second demon, a demon he has never come across before. Most demons immediately affect the hosts, not all, but most, and this demon has gone undetected for a long time, and there's a bigger plot afoot, and he is asked to collaborate with the demons instead of kick them out. And it's interesting to see what he does. I don't know how much of the events in this book are historical, I mean besides the demons, they, they talk about other things, but it is very interesting what is there, and I enjoyed it a lot. Then I read three short stories or novelettes by Suzanne Palmer. I really loved the Secret Bots story, and these seem to be related according to what Light, according to what Lightspeed magazine did, and so I started looking through. And the first one I read is 33% Joe, and this is about a soldier who as he's fighting, gets injured, and gets injured enough that he needs cybernetic replacements, but is not dying. And his cybernetic replacements are intelligent. And they realize that being a soldier is not what, really what he wants to do, and they're trying to figure out how to help him, you know, transition to something he is interested in doing. And it's not about self-preservation, they actually care about him. And it's very... It's so sweet. It's a very, very sweet one. And I will leave the links to these short stories down below. So the second one I read was The Painter of Trees, which is not related at all. It's a completely different type of short story. It's about a human colony that when they come to colonize a world, they start terraforming it and then realize that the world already had intelligent creatures, you know, human level intelligence, but their terraforming is now killing them off and the humans don't care. Their whole idea is just move forward. Uh, oh, something dies or someone dies. Well, that's it. Don't, don't talk about them. And it showed the dynamic when we don't consider our past only moving forward and what we think is progress is things get warped. I liked it, but not as much as the other short stories I've read by her. I then read Bots of the Lost Ark, which is a direct sequel pretty much to The Secret Life of Bots, where we meet Multibot Nine again. And Nine has been asleep for 64 years and has brought out because there's a problem with the other bots and the ship needs some humans to be awakened to fulfill a part of their return mission, which had never originally been part of their actual objective. 
And I found, so in this one, I actually found interesting, I got an idea of exactly how small bot nine is. Because I was definitely, I was, I, I think in the first one, I was thinking of like R2-D2 size, or if not R2-D2, the one that kind of rolls around looks like a soccer ball. But bot nine is a lot smaller. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And I really enjoyed it. It was fun to see. Bot nine was working more in alignment with ship. And the human bot nine comes across, realizes, oh, bots are actually intelligent. They're not just here to do grunt work. That was a, it was a very fun dynamic. And it, it was, and it was published in 2021. So it is up for nomination uh, for the novelette category. And I am nominating it. I then finished The Cruel Stars by John Birmingham, and this is a space opera. One of the unique features of this is it has like six different points of view. Now that's actually too many for me typically, but all of the points of view were coming towards one another and it just worked so well. All six of the different characters have a very distinct voice. After being introduced to them, you could have taken away the uh, their names, like the name tags, and I would have known who was talking in what chapter because of how distinctly the author showed that they see the world and how they talk, how they think, and it was fantastic. If more people did that for multi-point of view books, I think I would enjoy them way more, but yeah. <laughs> and this is a space opera where uh, human society has gone on to modify itself, gene hack itself, but there's an element that believes in human purity. And in an earlier war, they were thrust out of the known universe and now they're back and they are wanting to save humanity. And so we have various different characters. One who's a lieutenant on a Navy who is really just working to do her job and try to save money to save her father from a defaulter colony. Another one is the a uh, relifed general who kicked the pure lifers out the first time. We have a viewpoint of a princess, a 12 year old who, you know, it starts off where she's like, ah, oh, life isn't fair. You know, my life is so hard. I was kind of like, okay. And then to kind of see her evolve through this group of people coming back and trying to kill everyone. <laughs> And there's a couple more points of view, but I'm not going to spoil it. There's at least three listed on Goodreads, but the second one just came out, I think, in February. February, January. It, it just recently came out, which is why I had to pick up, you know, this one first. Also has a beautiful cover. This is very, for me, this is a very compelling cover. At first, like, this kind of looks like water, and then you see... Uh, and you like see like the shuttle kind of ships and you're like, oh no, that's space. That's just a planet underneath. It's a very, very beautiful cover. If you like space opera and you just like having a good time as people are going about their lives and you find, you want to see interesting characters from all over a spectrum, because this is like the characters that are, the, the, the characters in this, they're not just all rich people. They're not all pirates. They're not all people down on their luck. It is a mix and it shows how they are working towards not being annihilated. I did pick up and start a Dim Sun of All Fears where we are following Lana. This is the second in the Noodle, a Noodle House mystery series and there's a new mystery for her to solve. And so far I've gotten to the point where her mother and dad have gone back to Thailand to take care of her Anna, her grandmother, and a murder has just happened. Oh, and Lana's been the one selected to watch the restaurant, even though she's the second daughter. And it's not really what she was wanting to do. She was about to accept another job. And then her friend from the plaza where the restaurant is, is killed. And that's, that's about as far as I've gotten. And we kind of have the, okay, here's the setup. A little bit of the formula and now obviously we get to watch as she tries to decide whether or not she wants to investigate or not. 
So I hope to read more of that this next week. And I think I'm just kind of allow myself to mood read. I was thinking, oh, March is perfect. There's no readathons, and I'll just get to mood read my way through. And then in April, we'll have the next part of the Aurelium readathon. And then the Dracanathon announced a mini readathon, and the Aurelium announced a mini readathon. And then the Worldwide Writers Writeathon is happening this month, and they all coincide. <laughs> the, the two readathons are the same week, which is next week. And then the write-a-thon like ends that weekend of that where when both of the two read-a-thons are. So I was like, all right, the most I can read would be three books, but I don't know what I'm going to do or what I'm going to choose. And you know, both of the read-a-thons are pretty chill. I don't only have to read for those read-a-thons during that week. They're more about good vibes and let's have fun. But still, I'm going to very much uh, just enjoy being a mood reader this week. All right, and so th because this is after February has ended, we are going to go over stats. So my monthly go goal is eight books a month. Of course, I count short stories as part of the eight, so it's not specifically a book per se. And in this month, I finished 13. Three novels, two novellas, two manga, one novelette, and five short stories. One of my goals is also to read a new release each month, and I did not this month. I mean, like with the Cruel Stars, that sets up for a new release for this for this year, but I didn't actually read something that was published in 2022. I'm not too stressed out about it. Maybe this month I'll read too. It will get balanced. I know it will. For my Goodreads currently reading, I started the list at 162, and I'm finishing it at 161 because I realized as I was going through it the other day, as I've been thinking about doing these readathons, I was like, well, am I currently reading something that would work? And then I found that there was a book on there that I have finished and I looked it up and it's because I finished a different format of it. I finished the physical book and what was on there was the ebook, though I never had started an ebook. Goodreads is weird. This is one of their quirks that I don't like. So I took it off. And then I think there was like another book that was like that as well. And I'm just like, okay guys, all right. So got down to 161. And for my physical TBR, I started at 72 and I am finishing at 71 un that are still unread. And that's because I DNF'd you were made for this and I am unhauling it. And then my last monthly goal that I, tra that I track is finish already started series. And I, start I started the month with, I had 84 series to finish or catch up or to catch up on, um, and 17 of those are caught up. I finished no series. I started two, so that leaves me at 86, though 17 are still caught up. I started more series this month, or I've added it to more. Yay me. All right, and so for my writing wrap-up, I spoke a little bit about doing the, like, an outline kind of zero draft for a cozy fantasy short story, sat down to expand it. My brain was like, but you've already told me this story. And I'm like, but there's more details that need to go out. And my brain's like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, no, I really want to work on this. So I kind of been struggling, mostly also because the, I haven't found the voice for the short story. That would be the narrator's voice. And for me, like the narrator's voice is what most people would call like the POV, like first, second, third, omnipresent, you know, limited, whatever. I, I just like, what voice am I speaking in? And that is what I'm struggling with. And I was hoping to have this done this past weekend so I could submit it this week. We will see. I mean, either way, it's still interesting and I'll probably still work on it. And maybe in the future, even if I don't hit my deadline, which it looks like I probably won't. This is why I struggle with short stories. I'm weird. I'm a weird writer. Of course, it helps that it's still a hobby for me. It's not my job. So I can allow my brain to goof off, goof around, I guess. And then for other media, I'm not remembering anything that jumped out to me. Oh, my husband and I, we started a series called Inventing Anna from Netflix. And about, is this woman a con, con artist or not? And the reporter that's trying to figure out her story. I'm enjoying it. Or at least I enjoyed the pilot episode. 
I don't remember if that was watched last week or the week before. Oh, if I said it twice, I said it twice. It's cool. So, how did your week go? Were you kind of more lackadaisical and okay, whatever, or were you more focused? <laughs> My brain hurts, and it's early in the morning. These allergies are kicking my butt. Have a great week.